this is one of the most emotional, emotional roller coasters I've been on in a long time. Daughters is a Netflix documentary that follows a group of young girls as they prepare for a daddy-daughter dance with their incarcerated fathers. And right off the bat, this movie is way more important to the larger conversation about incarceration than I originally thought going into it. Because I anticipated this movie being heartfelt and heartbreaking, which it very much was. But I wasn't expecting it to mean anything as far as how to move forward. I wasn't expecting a real addition to the conversation of how we change things. And I couldn't have been more wrong. And the intense emotions start right from the beginning because the the film starts with a montage that you would have expected to see at the end of the film. So it's almost like it was saying, we're starting here and it's only going to tug at your heartstrings harder from this point on. Because as you learn in the film, it's not just a daddy-daughter dance. The fathers have to go through a 10-week course with a life coach about the, the, the weight, the emotional weight of this event and how to deal with that because a lot of these men haven't seen or been in the same room with their daughters in months and in some cases years because what I didn't know and what's revealed in the documentary is that hundreds, it literally says hundreds of prisons don't do in-person visitation anymore. It's only virtual visitation and that is something that the family has to pay for. I did not know that. Maybe I watched too much TV. I watched too, m- too many movies where I just assume that you get to sit in there and visit unless you're like in solitary confinement. And this course also helps them uh, talk with each other and help them realize the full weight and scope of what this situation is for them and their families. And that's really what this documentary does is it showcases the, the impact of one person's decision and one person's circumstances on an entire family. And it, it really is intentional and specific about it because we see the father, the daughters, and the mothers all in, these, in this one circumstance, but all dealing with it in very different ways and all dealing with equally intense and complicated emotions, but very different emotions like what the father is going through is its own set of emotions that's separate from what the daughters are going through which both are completely separate from what the mothers are going through and so they're able to showcase all of that and also um, display it in a way where it's very clearly understood that all of these emotions are valid and weighed the same but it's very difficult to navigate with each other and, and communicate with each other in a healthy way when we're all dealing with things that are equally intense but coming at it from very different perspectives. And these young ladies that are preparing to see their fathers range of ages from five all the way to the late teens and they all are processing it in very, very varied ways. And you see the progression of emotions and you see how the sadness evolves into resentment, which resolves into just being silent and repression. And you see how the absence of a person still has a a very intense effect on the day-to-day of the people left behind. Because there's this one young lady who's all of 12, and she sees and notices how her mom has changed since her father became incarcerated, and it's developed in this young lady to the point where at the ripe old age of 12 she's made the decision that she doesn't want to have kids she doesn't want to be a mother and she's she's not in totally sold on the idea of marriage all because of this situation how it's affected the people in her life and as a father of a young girl who is in the same age range as these girls on this documentary it was way too heartbreaking to watch all of this. I came close to turning this off several times while I was watching it, but I'm I'm very glad that I stuck through it because, like I said before, it gives 
it, it, it showcases how important it is at the end. Because with a lot of documentaries, you know, they're they're promoting an angle or, or perspective. A lot of times they're trying to tell you something, you know, you know, they are advocating a position a lot of the times. And with this documentary, there wasn't really an advertisement or a promotion for a certain way to stop this. There wasn't um, this advocacy for one program or one system to reduce what we're dealing with and us getting into the situation. And I wasn't critiquing the movie for this because I just assumed that this wasn't what the movie was about. This movie was just to showcase the effects of this situation and the, the full scope and breadth of how it can affect people of all age and how long-standing those effects are. So I wasn't really critiquing the movie for not having a position. I, w I just assumed that that wasn't the focus of the documentary. Until we get to the end and you realize that that is the entire focus of the documentary and the point of it is that the dance, this dance and the associated courses that go with it is this documentary's uh, solution to this problem. And so I guess spoilers, I guess for the end of a documentary, I don't know that I've ever done that before, but just in case you don't want to know. But at the end of the documentary, they say like with a text on the screen that this daddy daughter dance program has been in effect for 12 years. And in those 12 years, 95% of the fathers that participate have never been arrested after they've been released. And, and you have to understand the significance of a statistic like that because nationally, the recidivism rate for prison is over 80%. Over 80% of people who go to prison get out and go back to prison within 10 years of being released and over 40% of those are being rearrested within the first year of being released. And so to have a program that has such a high efficacy rate is something that definitely should be investigated and expounded upon and, and to see if that efficacy can be duplicated in, their, in other areas. Because look, obviously, people shouldn't commit crimes and people shouldn't go to prison. And yes, we should dedicate time and effort and resources into stopping people from committing crimes and going to prison in the first place. That is, of course, the case. But I feel like, and I feel like this documentary is saying that that is a separate issue. That is a separate issue than the recidivism rate. The idea that people who do go to prison just keep going, they get stuck in the cycle where they get out and they keep going back. The idea that we can stop that and, and, and pretty effectively not even slow it down but put a very distinctive and decisive dent into it is something that should be taken seriously. But look, this movie was stressful for me to watch but it had such a satisfying ending um, and so I'm glad I did. Let me know, are you planning to watch this documentary? Have you seen it already? What do you think about it? And how do you think about this program getting a wider deployment and being at least tested in other areas um, across the country? And do you think that this is something that we as a people should pursue? Let me know and we can get into it. Thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you guys next time.